call the Planning Commission of the City of Royal Oak to order. Uh, let's introduce ourselves, starting to my left. Yuri Casada. Charlene Douglas, Mayor Pro Tem. Mike Fournier, Mayor. Ann Vara. Tim Twain, Director of Community Development. Ann Beakey. Thank you. We have a quorum. Item B, with, this is the approval of the minutes for November 13, 2018. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Moved by Ms. Douglas. Is there support? Support. Support by Ms. Beakey. Any discussion on this? Not seeing. All those in favor say aye. 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 And the minutes are approved. Okay, next we have public comment on non-agenda items. Is there anyone here that would like to approach the Planning Commission on a non-agenda item? Okay, not seeing it. We'll close the public comment on non-agenda items, and we're going to move on to new business. This is a public hearing. It's a special land use and site plan SP 181230 to construct six, a six-story multiple family building with 78 dwelling units at 222 East 6th Street and 609 through 611 South William Street. Mr. Twain. Uh, the subject property is in the uh, Central Business District, uh, so those are the <clears throat> zoning ordinance provisions that would apply to uh, this development. Uh, you do have the staff report um, in regards to the site and the configuration of the site. Uh, the petitioner, as you indicated, is proposing to build uh, a multi-family structure with some 78 dwelling units uh, in that that they are removing all of the existing structures in order to accomplish mm -hmm. that. They are also proposing that the parking for the facility be uh, at grade below the units as well as uh, some below grade parking. Uh, in that regard, uh, this is a special land use in the uh, Central Business District. Uh, because of the uh, parking being below the residential units. Um, also in that regard, the building placement, one of the items you'll need to consider um, because of its proximity to one family residential zoning across to the east of Troy Street, uh, there is a, a requirement for a 25 foot setback on that property or that east property line of the building unless the Planning Commission, as part of your review and approval, uh, determines that it's not necessary and advisable. So that's one item that's up to your discretion, and they are proposing to have no setback on the uh, east property line. Uh, in addition, the height of the building uh, exceeds the maximum allowed, uh, again, because it's within 100 feet of residential zoning, uh, the maximum of 50 feet. Uh, the proposed building would have a height of some 63 feet 5 inches to the roof line. Again, this is a discretionary item as part of your review uh, and making the determination. Uh, another item for your consideration is in terms of site uh, clearance triangles. Uh, in particular, at the driveway entrance uh, on the west side of the building, uh, proposed to access the parking area. Uh, the overhead door uh, to service that area is back sufficiently. Uh, however, the building itself on the west property along the line along Williams comes out, out to the property line. Um, so again, uh, um, you can either have that modified uh, to comply uh, or uh, a grant permission to leave it as designed. Uh, another item that's in, in, in regards is the overall parking requirement. In the central business district, residential units are required to have one and a half parking spots per unit, or in this case, uh, 117 would be required for those 78 units. Um, if you can do the math, that's uh, a deficiency. Um, <coughs> They're only proposing 108 or about 1.4 units. In order to comply, you would either have to reduce the uh, number of units from 78 to 72 um, or grant permission for the petitioner to seek a variance from the Zoning Board of Appeals. You don't have discretion to, to grant the variance itself. Um, another item that's uh, non-discretionary or would require your permission to go to the ZBA is in regards to the actual design of the parking spots. Uh, as proposed, they're 
19 feet in length or depth um, and they're required to be 20 under the zoning ordinance so those are two items um, related to parking that you'll have to uh, consider um, the third item uh, or the, another item that's discretionary on your part is in the CBD um, when parking is proposed below residential um, there is a provision that gr grants you some authority to require it to have retail uses or commercial use along the frontage unless again you determine that that's not appropriate at this particular location uh, the petitioner is also uh, having openings for those uh, garage uh, first floor windows that they're uh, proposing to uh, have decorative panel mesh uh, uh, installed again that's a discretionary item on your part finally uh, petitioner is removing four trees from the site uh, pursuant to the ordinance requirement of replacing uh, two for every one that's removed uh, they are proposing to install 12 uh, new deciduous trees uh, in the uh, right-of-way uh, along uh, 6th Street uh, and along uh, Williams and Troy uh, in order to comply with that and whether or not uh, your determination meets that requirement so that's the special land use report. Um, I think I'll stop there before we go through the site plan review uh, and base the site plan review on your determinations uh, under the special land use. Thank you, Mr. Twain. Any questions, Mr. Twain? Okay, Matt Singh, is the petitioner here? Welcome. Just your name, please. Bruce Michael with Thank Trowbridge you. Companies. Thank you. Would you like to expand on the project? It appears as though um, Mr. Thwing has given you a, a pretty good overview of the project. It's a, um, just briefly, we're um, looking at this being an upscale um, rental dwelling that will be held long term by the the family uh, and one of the things that has been made very clear to us we held our own I'll call it a gathering of neighbors that we invited last week and and brought them in for their comments and thoughts and have agreed to work with them regarding those uh, particular things uh, one of the things that stood out to us uh, overall was that parking is an issue in this area of the city overall um, everybody's concerned that if we're we have a shortage of parking that we may exacerbate the problem so our, our proposal tonight will be to um, either reduce the number of units or our first proposal would be that we would be able to take our parking level down another half a level we have a split parking situation you come at the street level here and you can either go up half a level or go down half a level underneath we have the ability to go down another half a level on one side which would get us another park 19 parking spaces um, which puts us into a, what I'd say a much safer zone in terms of being adequately parked for our facility um, we did take into consideration we thought that the the parking entrance should be on the side that it's on on the west side it's there's more activity there closer to downtown less impact on the uh, single-family zoned area that's uh, directly to the east um, other than that it's uh, you know there's a lot of good pictures here and um, we're here to answer questions whatever you might have thank you um, is there questions for the petitioner Ms. Douglas so the part of your building I mean just looking at the map where the two houses are now so mm -hmm. the the short edge of the L um, what's that going to do to the view of the condos just to the east of that? It just wasn't real clear to me in the in the drawings. Well, there's actually going to be a plaza that will be in that immediate area. I'm hoping that uh, right there. There we go. Um, on the uh, whoever's using the the cursor is doing a great job. Um, that is a view from the south. 
standing south in the parking lot and looking into that plaza area and on your right hand side of the drawing is the condominium building that's there uh, we have met with again many of the, the uh, owners of those condominiums and have actually worked on a alternative to how we would lay out that particular area to not affect their view so they'd be looking into this courtyard uh, instead of looking into a blank wall or something of that nature. And is your does your building touch theirs? No, it's actually, well, on the north side it does. Or did we leave a foot? On the uh, north east side of that terrace Sir, it does. Would you I'm please come to the microphone? Thank you very much. The, it's being televised, so we need to pick you up. And your name also, please. I'm Bill Jarrett, the architect, Jarrett Architecture. Um, if you look in the plan, can we go to the plan? Maybe like the second floor. Next, next one up. Where they have to take a minute. Right there. You can see in that corner, the northeast corner of the terrace. If you want to put your cursor right there, there's like a section right there of a few feet. It's approximately eight feet where it abuts that, and. Uh, we have been talking with that neighbor on a, a way to fix that. We were thinking that that little bit would not totally block their balcony, but it would a little bit. So we have an alternative plan now where we're going to maybe we're going to put that corner on an angle. And I have a copy of it here if you want to like to look at it. Which I corner? Think we have Sorry. Copies. Here, I'll show you. Can I pass this around? Sure. So that corner we're talking about, I'll, go to, I'll show everybody Sir? this is right here. Sir? It's kind of a small drawing. Sir, that, you'll microphone. have to go to the mic if you're going to. Okay. Yeah. That it's kind of hard yeah. to see from there. It's a little Yeah, wrong. that's okay. Pass this out to everybody while he's talking. Okay. Um, Thank you. He's going to pass it out there. Great. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Here is Same corner that we just talked about up here, the northeast corner of the terrace area, ah. which be approximately be on the south end of the building, approximately halfway through, which would be the northwest corner of that adjacent building. You can see where the two buildings abut each other just for a very small area there. So our solution would be to, at that corner, and I don't know if you can see that from here, but... You can see we're putting a slight angle there, yeah. so it no longer blocks that view of whatsoever. And then we're also creating a buffer along here of planters and so forth. Um, so there's a little bit of a, they could still see through where we're not totally blocking their view, but there's a little bit of a security barrier there with some nice planters and plants and green. So it uh, doesn't affect their view at all. It makes, still gives them privacy, but they have a, they're able to look out into the courtyard there, and uh, it seems to be acceptable. It seems like a good way to do it. I mean, the alternative could be a lot worse, building a wall right there or something like that. Yeah, we really tried. We truly tried to work around not doing that, making it a really nice space for them as well as the tenants of this building that we're designing here. Uh, okay, thanks, Ms. Vicky. Um. I appreciate that you uh, reached out and talked to some of the neighbors. That's that's really good. Um, one of our goals in Royal Oak is to ha you know create a, a better walkable community, and that means by keeping the sidewalk something that's user friendly for someone who's walking from neighborhoods into the downtown and such. And on your um, request here, you want to take take away both the ten foot setback, which will provide some green space and some buffer on on one side of the sidewalk. Obviously, the street side there's still that um, right away that stays green. And then in addition, you're also putting parking rather than retail on the main floor. Um, I'm just wondering, and that seems like two big compromises for the walkability, especially because you're only a block away from Main Street. And so as we try to again, encourage people to walk into the main area, I'm wondering if this is gonna be enough to make this so that it's not becoming a monolith across from the high rise that's already there for the senior citizens. Um, and if, what other considerations you've given to that besides just these mesh window-like things? I think the concern we have is that if we put commercial um, space there, is, is how viable is it? Mm -hmm. Certainly in a retail perspective, I think if you take a look at that, it's tending to become more of a residential setting than it is a commercial setting. So we don't want to get end up with a situation where we end up with vacant space, which mm -hmm. is probably worse than just about anything else you could do. Um, we could work with the 
the fenestration of that space so that it's not just what we've proposed. There's other things that we can do. The question is whether or not we'd be allowed to, say, have some overhanging cornices or something that bring down the scale mm -hmm. of the building to a more pedestrian level there uh, within the right of way. Mm -hmm. um, or you maybe, know. I don't know if it would be some consideration or even just or, or greening that wall somehow in terms of, I don't know if it's planned. If it, this is going to be a rental apartment building, right? So yes. you'll be maintaining yeah, it and, and that sort of thing. Absolutely. So something that may be user-friendly if someone's walking along that corridor and for the seniors also looking out rather than just be a blank wall mm -hmm. with cars peeking out mm -hmm. or peeking in whichever way um, to take some consideration to making that a greener. And we've there have been green walls that have been done very effectively, as a matter of fact. So that certainly is something we can take a look at. Yeah, we could, we could certainly, along all those windows, we can certainly build in some planters or have some nice planters. So the, there's different types of flowers and hanging plants and so forth throughout the, the year, depending on the type of plants put in there. But we could make that really nice and dress that up nicer. I think that's a good idea, actually. It makes the overall building look a lot better, too. Because otherwise, as we as we have taller buildings and we're encroaching on those sidewalks, it becomes less user-friendly. And, and, and so anything you could do to make it more to that person walking by feeling comfortable, um, or for the people looking out, I think that would make a big difference. Sure, and uh, one thing we haven't developed fully yet is a nice streetscape design, and you know that'll be part of this project too that we haven't fully developed, but that can be worked into the the windows as well. Mm -hmm. You know, so maybe some seating areas or some different changes in materials and planes, you know, to make it a little more interesting. So it's just not a flat. Yeah. That also would be. Yeah. I mean, I think exceptional rather than just being a straight wall, you're walking a long ways along. Sure. If it's feasible without Would we be or... allowed to vary the, the sidewalk along that frontage so that it, it moves out and in a little bit and mm -hmm. we'd have room to be able to create planting or not? No. No. Everybody else has been really nice. <laughs> what? No, but, he, but he really knows the rules. <laughs> <laughs> if you have the main sidewalk, you could create little bump outs along there, like say you want if you want to put a bench or something, right? Is that a possibility? Into the building? Could, no, into the, uh, into the, the sidewalk. Lawn extension. I mean, you have the main right away sidewalk that would be we'll follow consider. all the city we'll requirements. But if we wanted to add additional landscape to make it more interesting, or slight small paved areas, or so something like that, or planters, I mean, the city's open to looking at something like that, or yeah. You're going to have to get an agreement to maintain them, but yeah, it's okay. Okay. The other question I would I would ask is that um, I believe the cornice at the top level actually extends into the right of way. Yeah. So up at the very top of the building, there's a cornice that's th that extends out. My question is, will be we be allowed to have an architectural feature like a cornice at say the uh, first floor level? that could create more of a, a pedestrian uh, scale of that building uh, along the street frontage there. Generally speaking, the city doesn't like encroachments over the public right-of-way that impacts the city's ability to, mm -hmm. to tear it up later. So generally speaking, I would say no, but we'll consider what you're looking at. Okay. Further questions for the petitioner? Mr. Casada, uh, just a couple of questions. Um, Material-wise, you're up. Uh, you're up five stories with the brick. That you're, the brick is is not full brick. I'm assuming. What, what's what's the material? It would be would be full full brick. Yeah. This will be owned long term by the family. And if you were to look at our developments that have been done, we're really into high quality materials. All right. Um, Quick question, but I'm not a horticulturist, but I, I actually like the, the concept. <laughs> okay, well, you can answer the question. I, I like the concept of, of, of having the trees, and you've got shrubbery here uh, on, on your rendering, but you're going to have a six-story building facing north. Any effect? Uh, is there a particular type of trees that you're going to have to use? I mean, I understand that the growing season, the sun comes around, but still, they're facing north. What kind of considerations do, do you have to apply there to, to, to maintain something? Well, we'll, we'll our, our professional licensed landscape strip. architect will make the appropriate recommendation with the review by the city to make sure it's the, it's the proper. The last thing we want, because we know what's going to happen if they die, we're going to be ones replacing them. 
So okay. it's also it's not sure. a very wide strip there. It gets it, it looks like it gets more narrow on on the east side. So I don't know what the considerations are that you know the the narrower the strip, the tougher it is to, to keep the plants alive. I'm assuming. I, I would think that we would probably do some trickle irrigation as necessary, or whatever whatever the city will allow us to do out in, in the right of way. But um, we certainly don't want that. You know, it's a long term asset that we'll be owning and. You know, we're going to want to keep it in tip top shape because we want to keep it full and um, we'll do what we need to do. Okay, and just to sort of a follow up on that, just a, these there are there are uh, livable terraces on the top floor, yes. Okay, and I only because I've dealt with this as a construction litigator, I know we have uh, terraces that work just fine here in Royal Oak, but sometimes they don't. If they don't have you need it, need some elevated attention on that, uh, those terraces up there because they're yeah, otherwise they're going to. If you do anything wrong five stories up with different wind conditions and movement, uh, we often see, at least in my business, leaking into the, into the living space. So um, I'm, I'm just making we'll take We'll take all your suggestions and be happy. We'd we'll look, we'll look forward to getting your expertise on it. All right. Um, uh, you, you talk to the neighbors. None of the neighbors are here, or are they? Are here okay. For so, us. Uh, all right. These these uh, they'll get a chance to speak. Yeah, I take it one way or another. Okay. Thanks. Sure. Any other questions for the petitioner? Okay. Um, why don't you have a seat? We'll go ahead and open up the public hearing. This looks like we have a few people here. So, sir, on the end, would you like to approach? Just need your name. My name is Alan Ashley. I live at Royal Oak Manor, which is directly across from this uh, uh, construction. I'd like to inform the panel that neither the architect or developer, Sir, neither the architect the or nor developer ever discussed any of this or asked any of our members to come in and discuss these plans with. These plans are new to Royal Oak Manor. And I have several things that I would like to add to the discussion. Okay, sir, you've got three minutes. So. Okay, one, 6th Street and Williams must be kept open 24-7. That is the access for the, for the fire department to come to Williams for the Royal Oak Manor. That cannot be closed. All uh, workmen must park on 6th or 7th or on the Main Street parking across from Royal Oak Manor, which is on Main Street parking in P7. No parking on Williams because that is used for our guests and for reasonable accommodation people who can't walk very far. Hours of operation, we people have discussed that 9.30 to 4.30 in the morning and in the afternoon, the construction must stop at 4.30. When demolition on 6.09 and 6.11, are they going to have hazmat go through the houses first for any asbestos or lead particles? And when they do demolition, are they going to use water to keep the debris and air particles from getting into Royal Oak Manor? Also, uh, are the, how are they going to keep uh, other airborne particles? If they're not going to use water, how are they going to keep all that uh, debris from getting on federal property and into Royal Oak Manor? Are the developers prepared to repair the fence and any damages to our parking lot, which is right next to six, uh, the 611, one of the farthest house on Williams? That is our parking lot. That is our fence. Are they going to cover any damages in, uh, to the parking lot and to the cars? Also, are they going to uh, re repair or replace the trees, uh, which has been stated that they are, but most importantly, we were never told about this and the plans. They never discussed this. They never asked us one bit about what they were doing. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Anyone else? Your name, please. Ken Raskowski. I have a prepared statement that I'd like to read here. I have copies of it that I'll pass out. Thank you. Your commissioners, as the congregation president, I'm speaking on behalf of St. Paul Lutheran Church and School. 
I'm attending this public hearing on the Special Land Use and Site Plan Review SP 18-12-30 in order to provide your insight, you insight, as to concerns from the neighbor, neighboring property owner. Our facilities lie in the northeast corner and the south northwest corner of 6th and Main, 6th and William Street. As a local church, we pride ourselves in supporting the local community and being a good neighbor to our friends and businesses close by. Being a community church for over 100 years, we have seen many changes and have adapted to our dynamic times. The decisions made here will impact us for many years to come. Therefore, we ask that you strongly consider the concerns we are highlighting. In the memorandum dated December 3rd, 2018 from the Royal Oak Planning Division, reference is made to several discretionary and non-compliant issues with the proposal. This list of inconsistencies appears to be extensive. Our understanding is that the codes and ordinances adopted by the city are, are set to establish the minimum requirements to uphold the health, safety, and welfare of the community. Although we cannot speak for our surrounding neighbors, we in general have little objection to most of the required variances. However, I do strongly object to the item compromising the requirements noted in paragraph 4E, off street parking. It notes that for dwelling units located within the central business district, a ratio of 1.5 parking spaces is required for each unit. This proposal is nine spaces short of the minimum requirement. In many cases, nine space, a nine space shortage may not be significant. However, in this quadrant of the district, we are consistently challenged with a shortage of parking spaces. The senior citizen facility on the southwest corner of 6th and Williams, known as the Royal Oak Manor, is currently having parking concerns because of the city's, the, the city's minimum parking requirements are proving to be inadequate. Just to the east of the project, a new dwelling unit would require two parking spaces. We currently are helping the surrounding businesses by allowing them to them contingent use of our parking lots when we are not having a function. We have partnered with the adjacent Royal Oak Fire Department Station to help them with their parking concerns. We believe that compromising the minimum required off-street parking will create additional problems for us and others. Please note that by compromising some of the other noted Sir, requirements. it's been uh, three and a half minutes now, so. I'm almost done. Please wrap it up. Um, the other requirements such as height limits, setbacks, et cetera, you, are, you already are allowing more units to be built than the code allows. We would rather see requirements of two parking spaces per unit be enforced. However, if that is not possible, then enforcing the minimum of 1.5 parking units per space should be upheld. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your comment. Allowing us. Anyone else? Yes. Okay. Good evening. Thank you. My name is Robin Coventry, and I live at 610 South Troy, Royal Oak. So you mentioned, Sherilyn, that uh, my unit is the one that you, your first question, that's my unit. Um, I will say that we did go to a meeting, uh, the gathering, and I feel that this builder has integrity. However, we have talked with them personally, and we invited them to our unit after their gathering. Um, they have been more than accommodating with our issues. But, however, we do have one um, consideration is parking. And uh, that has been brought up by the builder himself initially, if you recall. He said uh, we would consider uh, taking the parking and doing less units. That would be my recommendation. Um, your uh, recommendation, Anne, was wonderful. Uh, we would like it to look as aesthetically beautiful on the exterior as it does on the interior. So um, wrapping it up, and I would like to say less units, higher quality, 
maybe two bedroom units as opposed to more one bedroom units. And we talked to them briefly about that. So you get the quality of, of, the, of the renter. Um, also, uh, the exterior being the trees. Uh, we have a garden on our deck. And so I want to make sure that the exterior landscape is done properly. That's it. So thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. I'm Deborah Savino. I live at 603 South Troy Street, right across from the proposed um, project. Um, the one thing I, I like about this plan that was presented to us last week, and I thank the um, Mr. Randazzo for inviting us, uh, is that it's got a pedestrian entrance right on Troy Street, which I think about 10 years ago something was proposed and it was just a solid brick wall that I'd be looking at. And um, I am one of the houses on the street that has a front porch, so I sit out there. Um, it's And it's much nicer than, than the previous plan and I appreciate that. Um, I have a concern about the first floor parking. Um, uh, and I did bring this up to the um, the builder about headlights coming through those mesh um, in, into my my living room, uh, especially if there's going to be over a hundred cars. I, I looked at the flow, and I'm not sure if that's going to happen, but it is a concern. And we did discuss um, last week about possible screening or or something. But I I would just like to feel comfortable that I won't have headlights going through um, into my house. Um, I know the parking structure on Lafayette, um, which was a public parking, um, they did take a lot of um, time to work with the neighborhood and came up with something that looked great and then also did not affect <clears throat> that the street the other side, just west of um, Lafayette. So, um, And I just thought there was supposed to be a transition, and maybe that's what you are explaining earlier, from homes to multi-level uh, dwellings and the height. Um, the other lofts on on Sixth Street or on Troy Street um, have setback green space, mm -hmm. and um, I'm just wondering if curb to curb construction is necessary. And about about the parking, um, a one bedroom rental only gets one parking space, as I understood last week. And this is the same problem the loft, other lofts on Troy Street have. I mean, those poor people. I don't have the problem. I'm just speaking for my neighbors. It's you know, if you've got two people in a one-bedroom apartment, you're going to have two cars. And um, and I know you've got restrictions that it's less than that, but it's really a problem, the, the condensed parking in, in that area. And um, also across from me, it looks like there's going to be one less public uh, metered parking spot. And looks like we're missing some now on Williams as well. So this puts a, an additional burden on the neighborhood. And um, the residents at the co-op already have a hardship about having to go across Main Street to park because that's now going to be developed. So they're going to lose that. Um, and so my bottom line is that the, the plan is just too dense and there's not enough parking. Um, and with... Apartments going in at the Griffin, 145 units, they'll probably open about the same time. It's just, it's it's a lot of rental units, and we're happy to see something of this quality um, in the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Good evening. I'm Rich Buttermore. Uh, I live at uh, 607 South Troy. Uh, also the president of the association there. Um, I had concerns about the height of the building. Uh, main concern is it's a lot, looks like it's going to be a lot higher than the building next to it. Um, I don't know how much higher. I can't tell from the diagram, but that's one concern I have um, because I'm going to be looking right out at this and it's going to cut down on a lot of the sunlight and stuff that we would normally get from the, uh, uh, you know, the western sun as it comes over because those other two buildings already blocked off the rest of our, uh, you know, 
sunlight from the associate or from the from the buildings. Uh, I have concerns about the parking. I think seventy eight spaces, seventy eight units is a lot. I think the commentary is correct that um, you know if you're going to have one or two people in those apartments, you're going to have at least uh, one car in each, and it's they're going to end up flooding the other streets around it. Um, we have a parking permit required on Seventh Street because that was a big problem where over by the uh, power station there, but. Some of the other streets don't have that, and they're going to need to park there and their friends when they come to party and stuff when they come to Royal Oak. Uh, and the other concern I had was how this process works. Do they just you give them a variance and, and they go ahead and do it, or is there follow-up or other comments allowed for from the public, or how does that work? This is the only public hearing. This is the only public hearing. Okay. Thank you. Well, it, yes. It could go to Zoning Board of Appeals, and if it does, that'll be... Noticed also for a public hearing. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. There was someone else that was making their way up. Hello. I'm Hi. Russell Desfoli. I am part of 610 South Troy Street. I'm the president of the association. Uh, aside, along with the other concerns that have been addressed this evening, I want to establish that we are concerned for the courtyard uh, that is within this uh, new development. As we are kissing the building, we will be looking into their courtyard and concerned for noise ordinances, nightlife um, parties. It would greatly affect our um, way of living right now. So. Um, concerned with lighting going into our units, concerned with late night um, activities outside in the courtyard, the, the amount of noise that would be traveling into our units. So that is one concern that uh, we're concerned about. Also, the structural integrity. We are physically kissing buildings, so they will be building against uh, our north wall, I believe it is and going underneath our building, so very concerned about that as well. Um, it, it is literally kissing. The, the two buildings will be kissing each other, so I'd like to just make a note of those. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Yes. My name is Mary Moore, and I'm president uh, of 610, uh, 614 South Troy. And I, too, would like to add our comments in terms of the overwhelming parking issue. Uh, I know that uh, the, uh, in our building, uh, most of the people have two spaces. However, the first floor only has one space. And many of those residents have two cars. So that puts some of them out on the side uh, on Troy Street for parking already. So with the additional parking, it would present a problem. So I would like to be added uh, for that comment. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, now seeing we'll close the public hearing and bring it back to this side of the table. Um, planning commissioners, are there more questions for the petitioner? Ms. Douglas. Did you really not talk with anybody in the senior high rise? We actually sent out an invitation to uh, that was provided to us by the city of all of the parties within 500 feet. I think it was. Was it 800 feet? I, uh, and and that invitation was sent out uh, with, uh, you know, you can call us whatever you want to do, and and so and then invited them to the uh, meeting that we had in um, in Troy, uh, one of our facilities in Troy. So everybody in that 10-story senior high-rise got a postcard. I don't know if everybody did. We did exactly what we took that. We took the mailing list that was provided by the city staff and did a mailing out on that. Mr. Twing, do you know anything uh, about that? Um, without checking, I would say that we, if there's a 
property address there, and we we send it to either the tenant, the occupant, or the manager. So it's possible they got them all, but I'd have to go back and look at our list. <clears throat> I mean, it would seem like, given the number of people who live there, that might be like a special thing where you went and knocked on the door and said, hi, where's the manager? We need to talk. Well, first of all, it's something that's not normally done by most developers. We do it voluntarily because we find it's a better way to get at all the issues. And um, uh, the notice that they would receive is the same, probably the same mailing list that would happen for, that probably happened for this particular meeting. So um, I feel like, I feel like we've, you know, we've took, we took, we took the same approach that you guys would use on it and we were frankly surprised that somebody didn't show up okay thank you how many people did you have show up a dozen about 10 or 12. okay and again the, the meeting was in in troy not in royal oak it was not in royal oak we have we own a facility in troy when we were able to hold it there uh -huh. speaking um I was wondering, given the comments, and again, given the setback issues, which are quite explicit in, in, the, in the zoning order, in, in the codes and such, has there been a version of this building rendered that would have more setbacks, uh, again, at least the 10 feet and the 25 as, as specified by the land use uh, plan, not, that wouldn't require these variances and also would, again, address some of these issues we're hearing on numbers of units, parking, that sort of thing? Um, we've... we've We've utilized pretty much the whole space that's there, given the cost of the property, mm -hmm, the, mm -hmm. to be able to to make uh, just the the economics work. Um, in response to a couple of the people's comments, mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry that the people in the senior facility somehow didn't get a notice, but we we did have no intention of not noticing people when we go out on our own and hold a separate gathering. We're trying to get that we're trying to get that input as best as we can in an informal setting so that people can really talk about kinds of issues they have but uh, a lot of the issues that were raised by this the senior facility is our construction operational issues and our approach on projects like this are that we actually prepare a construction operational plan and invite all of the stakeholders that could be affected by it and provide a you know a a 24 7 hotline so if somebody's having some kind of an issue we can get notice of it and deal with it in some fashion mm -hmm. and all these issues that he raised are are legitimate issues that have to be dealt with in that construction operation plan and will um, again as we started out the beginning of the of the of the meeting we heard loud and clear from the people when we had our meeting was that um, parking is an issue in this part of the in part of the city and so our um, our proposal that we would take that parking structure and extend it down another half level adds another 21 parking spaces to our proposal um, and again puts us a lot closer to a two to one ratio than than a 1.4 to one ratio um, we did speak with the lady who is on our east side and talked about putting a metal panel behind the mesh and of course if we're doing some additional fenestration things or there's other things can happen we heard her loud and clear let's not have headlights in my in my front door um we also uh <clears throat> i'm just want to address all these and get them out if we if we can um the uh the courtyard again we we actually spoke with a number of the members there including the gentleman who came up last and I uh, intend to work with them and develop one the physicality of the plan for the for the courtyard and the operations how it's going to be regulated by us and fortunately because we will own the building we have the ability to enforce it probably better than an association would um, could build it right into their leases and all that sort of thing uh, as well as limit access is appropriate. Uh, the, we know the buildings will touch, and it's been done a lot in these kind of urban settings, and it's an important consideration that uh, our structural engineers will be taken, taken into account, with pinning their footings and making sure that they're not experiencing anything that happens negative as we go and put our building in place with them. Um, again, I reiterate the whole concept that just from our own standpoint as owners long term, we don't want to have a parking issue either. I mean, for us, if we have a parking issue, it can hurt 
you know, the value of our building because we have people that may not want to be there because they have to walk three blocks down the street for their second parking space. So we, we, we hear that loud and clear. And and on the setbacks on the east side, right at the street level, um, we're not necessarily set back except for the entrance into the lobby, the door is set back. But also we have a couple of terraces, so the actual facade up high is set back. If you go to the uh, east elevation <coughs> or the rendering, the you can see that it, right above the entrance there, we're stepping back. We have a terrace. So the height of the building actually steps down as you kind of get into the neighborhood there to kind of help with that facade a little bit. So it's just not a straight six-story building there. So we tried to address that somewhat, you know, and for to make it a little more, the scale come down a little bit for the scale of the neighborhood in that area. Just wanted to reiterate that. We have a terrace that's outside of a fitness room there. And then we also have a terrace on the top level. There's another terrace up there that will have possible pool up there and that kind of a thing. And the building, the sixth floor is actually set back quite a ways from the, the street. So, and you can kind of see with that 3D rendering there, the east side, that it's not just a solid mass coming down. It has some variation and terraces in the front entrance the, up to the actual building is set back quite a bit too. So uh, I think that kind of helps if the concern about being the whole entire building set back 10 or 25 feet, yeah. The other, the other consideration is height. This building is just over 60 feet. The adjacent condominium building is something like 48 feet tall. Mm -hmm. um, so we're not substantially bigger than that building. Also, from the east-west perspective, the building's only 57 feet wide on the, on the eastern end. So as a sun blocker, it's 57 feet worth of, worth of sun that would be blocked versus what you have there now, which is a <coughs> kind of a vacant site. Mr. Twin, how tall is Royal Oak Manor? 120 feet. I don't know. It's 18 stories. 11 stories. 11 stories. I don't know. It's about you originally feet. mentioned you were going to have potentially an extra 19 spaces, and then you just now mentioned an extra 21. Is it 20? It's, mm -hmm. it's 21. I didn't count. As you're on the bottom level, there's a ramp. There's two ramps there's on, on both sides. And on the bottom level, we can park two spaces underneath the ramp up above, and that's where the extra two came from. Sorry. So then, Mr. Twing, if he, he did that, then he would not need a variance for parking? If, if, he, he, if he adds, an additional he, if he complies points? with one and a half spaces, he only needs uh, nine more. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can I ask why you didn't do that to begin with before you came to the Planning Commission? I'll talk about that. Well... I think we need to study that before we actually conclude that we will do that because if we, to do that we have to go down like 16 feet below grade and we got to make we haven't gotten the soils information back yet. Okay. And plus we have to provide storm detention, and the plan is to provide the storm detention below the parking level. Okay. So we want to make sure that's feasible. I think we would probably look at some other alternatives than doing that first. And uh, one thought I, I kind of wanted to ask, um, nowadays the trend is starting to go for smaller cars, and your 9 by 20 is a little bit on the larger side. I mean, that's probably for like more of a midsize or luxury car or even a pickup truck. I was just wondering if the Planning Commission would be open for the idea of making part of our parking spots, like maybe 30% of them compact cars. Like, uh, I know it's the ZBA that would look at that, but if we made a good portion of them smaller, we'd be able to gain... The additional spots and we're looking at putting a couple of electric car spaces too that might be a little smaller as well and they might be like a, a typical compact car spaces like eight eight and a half feet by 18 or even as low as 16 feet and uh, we were kind of studying that that we'd be able to gain you know like five or six more spaces or something if we did that kind of thing and played around with that and uh, which would get us a little bit closer to the 1.5 and we're just wondering if you think you'd be open for that kind of thinking if we still had maybe I was thinking like if we had five or six full-size pickup spaces you know right inside the front entrance and then we had maybe another 50 percent or more 50 or 60 percent standard parking spaces which would be like 9 by 19 getting pretty close to the 9 by 20 and then the rest maybe like another 40 percent or something after you take out it would be like eight and a half by 18, which is probably more the standard when you look at the type of cars that are being driven these days and people that might live in Royal Oak. 
would normally have a slightly smaller car. So, can you comment? Any thoughts on, on that? Um, you, um, <laughs> yeah. you, you also uh, opened up with saying that you would be open to reducing the number of units. Well, we have, yeah, we can we can talk about that. We would probably replace some of the uh, like if we if we determine that the market drives that, we might we could do something like for th three one bedroom units, we'd make that into one two bedroom or something like that, or we try or two two bedrooms, you know. So the square footage, overall square footage, may not be reduced that much. We might just have more two bedroom units, which would reduce the number, and then that would get us closer to parking. But the overall size of the building may not really change all that much. Mr. Casada? I, I may have misunderstood something at the very beginning. I thought the parking spaces generally were, are, they, are the parking spaces they are now, in, are they compliant, or did we have to? No, the, the required st standard parking space is 9 feet wide and 20 feet in length. They're proposing 9 by 19, so I see. they're short. I see. Okay. But now he's suggesting even smaller ones to a mix. That's that's the additional. Something that's consistent with what people are driving, you know, the trend is. Can, can, I, can I get one? Uh, excuse me, please. The public hearing is closed, so if we could please have it quiet in the audience, I would really appreciate that. Thank you. Ms. Beakey. I was just going to make one other comment with parking and rental, and, and, and as you're uh, thinking how to work this out, because it sounds like we're not quite there yet. To, to decouple, to have people pay for their parking space separate from the unit, so that if I were to rent a two-bedroom unit as a single person and need only one, um, to be more proactive about separating those things, not that people don't have a, a parking space and they end up on the, on the street, but somehow to not have a situation where I'm renting a two-bedroom and I get two spaces but I don't right. need them, Ag and then you still, agreed. You, yes. you, you're underutilizing what you have as it a is. Exactly. Which is yeah. a management. Uh, to totally tool. agree with you. That's typically how I, I like, then that way you're, you're renting somebody what they need and want versus they get it just because. Yeah. Beyond, beyond the land issues. <laughs> Any other questions? A follow-up question Mr. for Mr. Kinsada. Twang. Do we have in our ordinance, and I didn't look at it, uh, of accommodation for mixing size sizes of the spaces? No. That we just have a standard they got to be they complied with it, they'd have to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals to get waivers of the dimensional requirements. Has anybody done that? I mean, I, I you, go, you go to other parking. Sure, there, there, there's been a few over the period of time where they've gone to seek waivers. What, what if I can ask the petition, what, so if I got an F-150 or something, what size parking space are you going to provide? You said some... Some, some of those size. will be in that, again, just inside the door where, where the... The nine by twenty, which is Wait, your, nine your, by twenty, is big enough for those vehicles. I mean, if you get somebody who's got the tandem wheels and everything, you know, you yeah. need two parking spaces yeah. generally. But mm -hmm. if in the research we've done is that the average car that's being sold now in the United States is uh, something like sixteen feet seven inches long. I mean, they're they're the size of cars is, you know, I mean, probably all remember the nineteen seventy three Bonneville that you could land, you know, an airplane on. Um, those days are gone, and they're getting smaller, I think, as we go. Not according to GM. Mm -hmm. Just a, another question. Uh, just Mr. Kassan well, and then the mayor. You know what? I'm going to withdraw my question. I'll wait. Mayor? Yeah, I just had a question uh, for Mr. Twing. Um, this is property is in the central business district, correct? Yes. So other than a non-residential use, if the owner of the property wanted to come and put a restaurant in there or an office building, well, maybe not office building is a bad idea, but some sort of retail building, there'd be no parking requirement, correct? That's correct, yes. So, okay. So because it's residential, it's driving the parking requirement, which is 1.5 in right. this area. Okay. I just wanted to clarify that. Hmm. That's a good question, Mr. Mayor. Um, any other questions for the petitioner? So if they were reduced, uh, Mr. Twain, if they reduced it down to 72, they would not be required to go before the ZBA, correct? 72, two units? Yes. Okay. Based on the current plan. Okay. Um, I have a question regarding landscaping and um, trees. Um, I, maybe this might be for Mr. Twain, too. So 
if, if this were to be approved and they were going to construct this uh, development, would they be required to construct, if the existing sidewalks are damaged, would they be required to reconstruct those sidewalks? They're going to re be required to rebuild the entire sidewalk because okay. they're going to tear the whole, uh, that whole area up yeah. in order to build this building. Uh, okay. Given the depth they're going and the foundations they're exactly. doing, there's not going to be any sidewalks left while they're building this. Okay. So Correct. They're going to rebuild the entire thing. Yes. Uh, and, and as far as the trees, the city has a tree ordinance that allows you to put certain types of trees in the right of way. Right. That's going to be what they're required to do. Okay. Uh, if they want to do benches and other sorts of encroachments, they're going to need a license agreement with the city approved by the city commission that indicates they're going to maintain it and, and, and those sorts of things. Otherwise, it'll be a standard sidewalk with lawn and, okay. and standard street trees. If we were to approve this, um, would the plan, because it's a special land use, would the Planning Commission be able to um, promote, with the engineering department's approval, of course, um, in the forestry department's approval of trees, uh, a specific type of um, setting for the tree to, for the survivability to be greater. I, what I'm getting at is it's called a tree box. So you're not just putting a tree in a hard compact clay soil and then covering it with a grate. It's an actual tree box and the tree roots have room to grow. Can we, can we introduce that into? Uh, it's unlikely there'll be tree grates in this area because it's not going to be the streetscape design. It's going to be all lawn. Okay. Um, as you see on their, as you see on their plan, Sixth Street will be pretty much lawn with trees. Or, okay. Uh, and the trees that are put in the city right away are drought tolerant. Uh, we don't want trees. Uh, the city doesn't even irrigate trees anymore. Um, we're putting in drought tolerant trees, so we don't have to water them. Okay. Um, so okay. I don't know that that's necessary. There's just some more advanced techniques now with uh, uh, urban landscaping that. Uh, city should be looking at and this could be an opportunity for that. but if this if there's going to be a a parkway associated with this and that would the having to do that would that be is, is important i think oh any other questions for the petitioner mr casana again just this is a two-part we're going to we have a special land use we can say yes to that and then we have to deal with the site plan which many of the issues we're talking about are site plan issues we can That's correct. I mean, if, if you're if you're comfortable with the special land use request, there are a couple of statements I would uh, suggest you might want to make um, as part of that approval. If you are considering requiring uh, compliance with the 1.5 parking requirement, um, then you could approve the special land use, but not grant permission to seek variances related to that. Um, if you're uh, any of those that you're uh, considering granting permission to seek, I would identify those, um, i.e., the dimensional requirements for the 9 by 20 spaces. Um, so, I, depending on where you want to go with those items, um, and we did list several. Um, the setback from Troy Street, if you're comfortable with no setback as being proposed, then uh, there's no permission to seek a variance. You have that discretion, so you don't need to identify it. If you simply approve it, then we'd move to site plan review. That making sense? Okay. Any other questions for the petitioner or Mr. Twing? So speaking of the 25 foot setback, so could we just see, can you point out again where that would be? Like, where is the part that should be 25 feet back that's not? If you look just at once the, again. the mm -hmm. plan that's on the screen, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Troy Street is here, 6th Street runs vertical. The properties on the east side of Troy are zoned one family residential. Mm -hmm. So technically, because it's within 100 feet of uh, that zoning, um, there is a requirement up to your discretion. I don't want to call it a requirement because you can decide it's not applicable or you can impose it. But that 25 foot setback would be from the property line to the building. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or you could do something less. And then the rest of it is the 10 feet. 
The rest of there is no required setback in the CBD. Oh, there's not. Oh, okay. Just for when you abut resident. Oh, abutting the residential sides. Oh, okay. Not on the other side. But the high rise is considered residential, obviously. Uh, it's the zoning, not yeah. what the use is. I see. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, I don't know how to answer that question yet. <laughs> People will live there, but right, the zoning is different. I have a question for the petitioner. Uh, back, back, going back to the retail component, um, did you do a, a market analysis to see if retail would work in this area? You made a comment that you didn't think it would, but what was that? What was that opinion based on? Um, we have uh, we own several sh retail shopping centers and have you know frequent um, contact with uh, retail tenants, uh, national as well as local. Um, and uh, and that in the course of all those discussions, we're not finding interest on the part of a lot of those retailers to be in that location. Because it's not study. close enough to downtown, or is it two two blocks away? Is it, or is it a visual thing, or what? What is it? Um, it's a comedy. Some of it's just people just look at it and just I don't like it. You know, it's a, the, you get with a number of the retailers, it's up to it, actually up to an individual who has a territory so that says, okay, I do Starbucks in this territory, and they'll look at it and say, I just don't like it. Okay. Um, a lot of it has to do with foot traffic and the general nature. I mean, what's around it now? What's around it now is no other retailers for the most part. So they're a pioneer. And you're going to have a lot of people be reluctant because you have a pretty much a herd mentality with retailers. They're pretty much suburbanites. They all went in the malls and everything. And now getting them introduced back into the urban environment is difficult because a lot of them think in a suburban fashion. They think of a strip center or a, shop, or a shopping mall that they've been in, and putting them into the, into the urban settings has been difficult because uh, they just don't think that way. They want parking in front. They want all the typical stuff you see in suburbia. And you don't see that in the urban settings. Um, it works better in places like Chicago because they have a much, much higher density. But for the most part, you're, you, have to, you have to work to get the retailers to come into, into these more urban locations. And they want to be at Maine and Maine. You know, they, they don't like to be off the beaten path at all. They don't even like that in suburbia. So if, you, if you're driving down... Let's pick whatever major street you want to call it in, in Troy, say. Uh, you could be uh, a quarter mile up uh, Coolidge Road off of uh, Big Beaver, and there's no interest at all. They're just, you know, they, they want to be at Maine and Maine is kind, okay. of, is kind of the way the mentality is. So, so we haven't done a study per se, but basically it's, the study is, is having daily contact with retail tenants and, and hearing what they want to say. Um, if we could get somebody here, I'm, I'm sure we would, it would be something we'd consider. Uh, but we don't want to have a situation where the, the buildings do them great, but we got vacancies, we got vacant storefronts that we just can't fill. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? If not, is there a motion? Uh, public hearing is closed. Um, public hearing is closed. Public hearing is closed. Ma'am. Please. Thank you. Is there a motion? Ms. Douglas. So, I, Mr. Twing, you have said the, the three things are um, that might affect their, the zoning board is setbacks, parking spaces. What was the third? No, there's really only two. There's the number of parking spaces. And the size of the and parking. The size of the parking spaces. All the rest of the items are really up to your discretion. So if you approve the site plan as submitted, you've said they're all okay. Um, but just starting with a special land use, right. um, neither of those do those two come into play for the special land use. I would. I would under the special land use. If you want to grant permission for them to go to the zoning board, I would do it as part of the special land use. So those two items. I would address as part of the special land use. Okay. And then, you, then you'll you'll address them as well as part of the site plan review. But you can address everything else there. Uh, so if you want to grant permission to go for the number of parking spaces, you'd grant that permission. If you don't, then you then you wouldn't grant that. If you want to let them.
consider smaller spaces, then I would identify that as something you're grant permission to go for. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to make a motion to um, uh, um, require them to provide 1.5 parking spaces for every unit, no matter how that they accomplish it, if it's by extra parking or fewer units, um, to grant them permission to uh, go to the zoning board for smaller parking spaces that is 19 feet long instead of 20 feet long. I'm sorry, was setbacks in this also? Okay, then that's my motion. Okay, is there support? I'll support it. Support by the mayor. Any discussion on this motion? Ms. Douglas. Yeah, the subject of retail, um, we, we don't hear it necessarily a lot here at the Planning Commission, but certainly at the DDA. Um, there's, it's not a state secret that Royal Oak struggles to bring retail into its downtown. And if we're going to seek retail, I would, if, I mean, there are retails who want to be in Royal Oak, I think they'll want to be in a more concentrated shopping district. And I think we want that also. And I look at the apartment building on uh, Washington where um, the rental place rental used, used to be. Um, and I know they shoehorned some retail into their uh, ground floor facade and they kind of did it kicking and screaming all the way. Um, and I just, I agree with them that I don't see this as a retail location. So that's not really an issue for me. Um, and I'll deal with, but I do agree with Ms. Beakey's point about sort of the, the visual interest of that facade, but that's something we'll deal with on the site plan. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mayor. Yeah, so for me, um, certainly when we get to the site plan, which is the second part of this, I have some questions and concerns, uh, hopefully, you know, hearing from my colleagues up here, how we can address specifically related um, to some of the aesthetics. Um, you know, dealing with some of the greenscaping, some of the screening, making sure that the building has limited impact with lighting and all of that good stuff. But I'll wait till we get to the actual site plan. But as far as the use of this property, um, I don't object to, um, you know, making the um, petitioner meet our 1.5 uh, parking spot requirement. Um, I think this area is a little bit unique. I do see a trend where maybe in my the private sector life that I live, um, you know, uh, for what I do for my vocation, um, that the dependency in urban and micro urban areas of uh, individually owned vehicles is going to reduce over the next 20, 30 years, um, and probably in the next five to 10 years. I think we have other cases in the downtown where we even have a little bit less and, and it's managed quite well. I think in this area, given the activity uh, with Royal Oak Manor, the adjoining properties, I think 1.5 uh, is appropriate to meet that requirement. Um, as far as the actual use, um, you know, I have concerns that if, um, you know, we, we sort of uh, push away residential development for this piece of property here, that in fact you would get, I won't say traditional retail, but it's a central business district. There are no requirements other than for residential to have parking. So you could very well get just a small building there that brings in, you know, traffic, uh, from a, a commerce perspective and, you know, could actually exasperate the parking situation, create more annoyances for uh, the neighbors uh, in that area. So there is a risk. Um, I think that given the residential area that surrounds it, residential makes sense for this um, particular uh, piece of property. And, um, you know, nothing would stop a fast food restaurant from going in there and popping up shop, which I think would be a significant with drive throughs and all of that uh, to be, be an issue for, um, you know, the folks there. So for me, um, I think residential makes sense. I think 1.5 parking spots makes sense. I think that going to zoning to get maybe a little bit of relief, I'm fine with that on the size of the parking spots. I'd like to see, you know, the petitioner also explore uh, some of the other ideas, such as reducing the number of units. Um, and certainly charging for um, unused spaces, which I think is in the petitioner's own best interest to do that. Uh, but uh, I do have some other concerns we'll talk about at site plan, but I think uh, for, as far as the use, residential makes sense for me here, given the other uses in this adjoining area. Thank you, Mary. Mr. Casano. Uh, just briefly, yeah, I, I think it's, a, I think it's the, a, a very good use for this uh, 
p spot. It's a transitional space. I think you'd have a tough time bringing retail in there. And I don't, if you, if you did anything substantial there, you got a, a parking problem, make it worse. So I, I agree with that. I'm, I'm, I noticed that most of the units are 600 square feet or less. Probably um, the 1.5 is going to be quite adequate. I do think that, um, yes, with the site plan, we'll, we'll, we'll have to deal with that. Uh, but I think it's a, I think it's a, it's a very good uh, use of the of, of this uh, property, quite frankly. Thank you, Mr. Casada. Any other comments? Okay, that seeing, we'll uh, call for the vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so the special land use has been approved, and now under the site plan, Mr. Twing, is there any? Oh uh, well, item one references the zoning board of appeals. Um, so we, based on your action there, I would strike the. Uh, permission to uh, uh, seek the waiver of minimum number of parking spaces. The only thing you've granted them permission for is the uh, size of those parking spaces at 19 feet versus 20. Item two is in regards to the maximum height of the building, uh, indicating that it's okay with the Planning Commission that the building height is 63 feet 5 inches versus 50. Um, plan indicates there's no setback from South Troy Street. Uh, based on your uh, whatever you want to direct with that. Uh, the site corner, corner clearance uh, provision, again, at the driveway off of Williams. The overhead door is back, but the building itself sits out where it impacts that to some extent. Um, that you're okay with no retail. Item 5 you've already discussed. Um, item 6 is in regards to the trash compactor room, that it be big enough uh, to handle all waste, including recycling containers and, and other items. Um, item seven is regards to the engineering and right-of-way work um, in terms of reconfiguring an access door in the southwest corner that swings out over the right-of-way uh, that not permitted, as well as uh, reconfiguring the streetscape and sidewalks of, of East 6 to South Williams and Troy in accordance with city standards. Uh, they will need under item C to address storm detention uh, for the central business district. Item 8 is in regards to all exterior lighting complying with the <coughs> shielding and uh, um, down directive requirements. Any signage will also have to comply with the sign ordinance. And then, of course, posting the uh, performance bonds uh, and, and other requirements from the building official and city engineer. Mr. Twain. Okay. Um, questions for Mr. Twain or discussion regarding the site plan? I know the mayor has some questions. Any questions for the petitioner? Um, I guess my question for the petitioner would be is, uh, first off, as far as, um, I mean, what's your commitment level to making sure that uh, for adjoining properties that when you talk about doing a greenscape ball, you said it's a terrific idea, but at what level do we go from a terrific idea to some sort of commitment in that regard? Uh, in, are you talking about the entire facade on the th yeah, three Yeah, we talk about the screening. We talk about both for aesthetic purposes, uh, both for, um, uh, and also for, uh, so we limit the light pollution for adjoining properties. Uh, for first, um, regarding the the greenscape, we'd like to figure out who should we work with, Mr. Thwing, with regard to doing it. Yes, we are committed. I think you'd find out if you went through a number of the projects that we own. We're it's a long term asset that we're going to own for a long time, and we'd like it to win awards versus you know being something we just skated by with. So you have a really strong commitment from us. I don't know how you want me to state that. I'm willing to state that we're willing to do um, uh, substantial efforts to To the extent improve. that it's possible you can do it? Yes. Do it. Okay. Um, across the street, we talked a little bit about the setback. Were you able to make contact of your 10 or 12 folks that you met with uh, from the adjoining property on the other side of Troy Street that would be most impacted by the setback? The only, I think the only person who showed up at our meeting who was from, who was to the east, you're talking about to the east, correct? Yes, to the east. I think was the woman who experienced the concern, and she's right across the street. She says, look, don't let the headlights hit me. And I think you were generally appreciative of the fact that we have a 
we have a pedestrian entrance there. It's recessed um, in, in that we don't have this big blank face, uh, I think was her big concerns there. So um, she's the one person that did show up. And we certainly, uh, one of the ways that we can deal with her, her headlight issue is, is that where those mesh screens are is we can put a metal Right. That metal panel behind it to block the light so they, they don't come up. It's still allow for ventilation. Yeah, because when I'm looking there, I mean, with your setback next to the adjoining building, um, you know, the difference doesn't impact every resident. I'm looking maybe one or two, maybe one property right. directly across, and maybe a few from an angle. Right. Okay. All right, thank you. That's all the questions I have for right now. Okay. Any other questions for the... Petitioner regarding the site plan. Is there a motion? I have a question that I would like clarification on what you mean by additional la landscaping or greenery of this building. They have submitted a landscape plan um, with specific uh, trees, number of trees, locations of those trees, that green space. Um, is the direction that that's insufficient? Is the direction that you want something added to the building? Is there something added to the courtyard? Yeah. I, I, uh, if you simply send this back to staff and the petitioner, we're going to tell them to build what's on this landscape plan. Yeah, so I think, in, in my opinion, it's adequate screening to reduce light with a emphasis that that screening be of a... Now this is where it gets uh, very subjective. Screening <laughs> light, though, from the parking lot? Correct. Okay. All right. Yeah, as opposed to looking in and just seeing cars, you know, we did that kind of on the Edkin building on Main 11. They put the oak trees up as art. Oh, um, that was a good idea, yeah. Gotcha. Can't take credit for that one, no, but I, I supported it. <laughs> We're willing to plagiarize all good ideas. <laughs> And again, related, I mean, I, I would like to see something additional on the whole, especially that long wall that's along in front of the senior center, as I said earlier, something to the effect of greenery on the building that would be yeah. either we, we window like boxes or whatever it is. I mean, just so he can yeah. document it. Um, so I, I would call that a modification to the building facade, I guess, to include something not just on the street side, because I think it would enhance the, the both the building as well as the neighborhood experience there. Yeah. Again, I don't have. I think that's a great idea I don't because have it takes advantage thing. of very little space and can achieve what you're looking for. Um, and in generally, those green walls do fairly well; they survive well. Yeah. That's one of the issues you got to make sure it works. And, and if you're familiar with the building, they're talking about also that they did an oak tree like relief on. So I don't know if that, but that's different than what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Ms. Douglas, I just want to be. So, are you talking about just on the? West facing facade or also on the north facing facade? I mean, my preference would be to be as much as possible around the whole building. Um, the, the one along the long stretch that's uh, on the. That'd be the north facing. North side. North, north is the biggest Six. concern. I, Sorry, I think I, north, I and, east, north and west are your biggest lengths of facade right. that you would want to make sure get treated. But I think given what you said about the cut in at the one corner and some of those things. I mean, you understand what I'm saying, so I don't think it's a big modification. It's just a little tweaking as far as... It, we're, we're, we have to find space to be able to plant those plants and allow them to survive and then be able to, to grow up the wall. Mm -hmm. um, but there have been a, lot of, been a lot of green walls done in urban settings that have had very little care and have done extremely well, so it's a, it's a really good idea. Mr. Just a, qu a quick question for the petitioner because I forgot to ask you before. How, how are you, uh, what kind of barriers are going to be between the uh, courtyard, your courtyard and the, south, the southern uh, parking lot? We provided you with a, um, um, a perspective drawing. I'm sorry, we're standing here looking at the perspective drawing. You're standing in the parking lot looking at it okay so, so first of all because it's elevated there'd have to be a fence and the, you know fence just just for safety perspective so people you know falling off uh, won't fall off and hurt themselves because it's more than 30 inches above so what what is this this is a concrete wall or what is this we're we're if you're so I, if you're looking here, you're standing mm -hmm. in the parking lot while you're standing on a platform in the parking right. lot, and you're looking at 
this plaza, which is going to be probably a series of specialty paver panels mm -hmm. that's sitting on top of a concrete deck because mm -hmm. the parking's below. Mm -hmm. This area here is an area that we created in speaking with the, the right. neighbors. That's, that's, that's facing east. I'm wondering about, I guess I am, I'm wondering about what the element here is at the bottom of the picture you gave us. Is that a concrete wall? And what is it? Is it? According is it, to the drawing up here, there, it's the same railing that's on uh, balconies. Please. If you look at that oh. rendering, the south oh, I rendering see. right there, okay. you see the wall, the wall of the parking structure below the terrace. See, there's a corner. That's what you're seeing right there, just okay. the edge of that wall. Masonry wall. Yeah. Yes. Okay. It would be a split face block. On that's, that that's, that's all I want to know. Yeah. Thanks. It was some kind of a trim Sorry. piece there of probably. I'm not sure exactly. Any other questions? Is there a motion? I'll move to. Approve the site plan with the state, with the list of contingencies. Is there support? Can you clarify the contingencies? The contingencies that are Just in the plan, or the other ones that we discussed. The contingencies that are on the uh, uh, staff report. So no interest in additional um, wallscaping on wallscaping. If, uh, that could be added if, as um, on, uh, you're talking about on the east, west, and north facades on the first floor. North the, and west. North and west, not east. No. Okay. North and west sides. Would, so we would add a number 12 that in the addition of having screening. And screening, or you, and this is, is a different thing. Wallscaping is the right word. Sorry, I just made that up. Um, Sounds good. How about how about um, um, the, I think we talked about window boxes or other uh, uh, green elements. Maybe green elements or green features. I mean, because I'm not saying what yeah. specifically. Green features. I'll go with that. Green features and well, a, something living. A living, living. Living. Yeah, not green paint. <laughs> not green paint. Right. Something living. Yes. Other than weeds. Yes. <laughs> And I guess there has to be a number 13 then, which is the extra screening on the, on the, uh, behind the mesh. Mesh is correct. Yeah. I'll second that. Okay, so there's been a motion by Mr. Casada, support by Ms. Douglas. Any other comments? Did Discussion? we, did this include the, the issue about the noise, potential noise from the patio area? Did we discuss that? Or, no. We haven't talked about that. Any other discussion? Mayor. Yeah, I'll just, um, you know, for a couple of the concerns that uh, a few of them, I mean, certainly parking was a, was a big one that we heard from a lot of the folks coming to, to public comment. And uh, I'm glad you came out because, you know, I might have, at least on the first vote or this vote, said, ah, 1.4 is close enough to 1.5, but it did remind me of some of the parking issues we have in this area so I'm grateful uh, for the folks that came out tonight and expressed their concerns in that regard some of the other ones I mean you know us not living in that area you know we can't potentially identify all the pitfalls that come with any good or bad project so um, I think we've addressed hopefully an item I think it was 13 Mr. Casada's mm -hmm. uh, motion related to some of the lighting and screening issues with the parking garage to eliminate the light pollution I think we've addressed some of the issues with the aesthetics for people that are facing the property. Um, when we look at some of the setback requirements, you know, I, I took a second look and, and, I'm, and I'm looking and I'm, I'm seeing where that would be most important against obviously the residential property. It is 13 feet higher, but a lot of that is attributed to the terraces, which are already set back. Um, and the rest of the building really isn't, um, when you compare it to its neighbor, you know, it's not a dramatic shift forward and sort of out of, you know, um, architectural sequence for the, for the existing structure. So um, something to look in, something to look at, but it doesn't give me extreme caution or concern uh, given the way the, the, the stack development is from that corner on that narrow strip uh, part of the property. So um, I think residential is the best use here. Um, we've addressed, I believe, uh, the concerns that uh, came before us in a reasonable way to the best that we can. Um, and uh, so I'll be supporting the motion. 
Any other discussion? Okay, now seeing them, we'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank Passed you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank Okay, let's uh, move on to item two. This this also is a public hearing. Sure. We'll wait for uh, Commissioner Douglas to come back. Mm -hmm. I hope oh, she I comes to, back. Uh, <laughs> it's up to you, I right? Yeah, we can wait for her. <laughs> Okay, this uh, uh, item number two is also public hearing. This is also a special land use and site plan, SP 181231, to construct a three-story mixed-use building with ground-level office space and 12 upper-level multi multiple-family dwelling units at 924 South Main Street. Mr. Twin. Again, you should, should be able to review the staff report online. Um, petitioner is uh, proposing to take this site, which is in a mixed-use two zoning district. It's on the northwest corner of Hudson Avenue and South Main. Uh, they're proposing to demolish the existing buildings and construct uh, a new facility with, uh, as you indicated, uh, 12 multifamily units and approximately 1,700 square feet of uh, office space on the ground level. Uh, in that district, uh, it's considered a special land use where Residential units are placed above a, another permitted use, uh, so that's why the uh, special land use uh, requirement is uh, part of this uh, request. Um, the first item I would point out uh, for your review is the number of uh, units is based upon the uh, size of the lot and the density requirements. Uh, as indicated, the, the site is uh, about 5,500 square feet. In order to put 12 units in, you'd need roughly uh, uh, 39,000 square feet. Um, so there would be a, a, a variance uh, required from the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, the Planning Commission can uh, grant a density bonus of 100%, but uh, with the size of a lot, uh, uh, the petitioner is exceeding that as well. So. Uh, you would need to grant permission for them to uh, seek a density uh, bonus or a density uh, waiver from the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, in this district, the maximum height of the building uh, is limited to 30 feet. Uh, they are proposing 31 feet to the roof line, uh, but the Planning Commission does have uh, discretion in that regard. Uh, based on the mix of uses, uh, the required number of parking spaces uh, are 31, and that's uh, for 12 units plus the uh, office space at, uh, at uh, roughly 1,700 square feet. And, and that would also require uh, you granting permission to seek waivers from the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, so that's really the special land use report as far as items of, of that you need to consider. Um, 
I guess I'll wait on the site plan until you get there. Thank you, Mr. Twain. Any questions at this time? Not seeing it's petitioner here. Uh, good evening. My name is Jim Schneider, Schneider Smith Architects. Um, I have some letters here of support. One is from Park Title, which is due north of this property. The other is from a business called Late Night Party Store, which is south of this property by about a block. So. You may recall this, I believe, was on the agenda for site plan approval for a different project in June. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Cassis are here. Um, they came to us following that site plan approval and asked us to look at their project and kind of rethink it. And that's what you see before you. Um, we felt a couple things important about this were obviously the location. It's, you know, we think of it as an urban site, but this is a pretty intimate project, uh, not too much overbuilding of the property. Uh, we looked at several different things. One one thing we looked at was, you know, just proposing, we theoretically could have proposed about 14 units of multifamily with 100% parking underneath. We would have been very close to the parking number. We would have probably needed a slight variance. We thought it was important to add something at the street level. Um, the previous project was about set back about three feet from the street. Uh, with a small retail. We felt office was a good use here, and we felt strongly that it was worth looking at the parking realistically in terms of, you know, what the, what the property could support and what was a reasonable amount of parking. So our parking number of 18 is essentially based on about 1.5 per dwelling unit. We have all one-bedroom units. Um, 1 1.5 seems to be about the average variance that's being granted on most of the multifamily going up in and around Royal Oak. The small amount of office here, although it you know, may have some parking burden, it, at that size it's not going to be very significant and it's going to be off hours from the parking for the apartments. Trend-wise what we're seeing is one bedroom, you know, loft style, higher end apartments is, you know, where we think the market's going. This building in particular is unique in that it is only 12 units, but it's got some nice common elements to it, like fitness area, community kitchen, community deck space. Um, we've pushed the apartments back from the street line, sort of created a live rooftop outdoor space there along Main Street. So. Um, that kind of gives you an overview of where we're at with it. We also thought it, the, the previous project to enter the apartment uh, portion of it, you entered it from the back side of the building. We felt it was important to put a lobby on Main Street for the apartments, so the apartments have a front door on Main Street. Um, so, and again, you know, we, we think this is a better use of the property than the previous proposed development, so. Be happy to answer any questions if you have any. Any questions for the petitioner? Ms. Beakey. When you say that the residential in the, in the office would potentially share the parking, would you mean that then it wouldn't be a sign so that they can, or the residents would allow them to use it? Um, maybe that's getting ahead, but is that what you mean? Yes. I mean, basically, the parking would be open during the day. Mm -hmm. it, Can you talk about the community kitchen? That's just a community space for the residents, you know. You want to watch a U of M Michigan State football game or something like that. It's just a gathering space. It's it's oh, not okay. it's not a kitchen per se where there's fruit food prep, but again, one one of the things that we're seeing is you know, individuals have more disposable income, you know, young individuals that are going to live in one bedroom apartments you know, want, want some amenities with them. So we're seeing community spaces. We're seeing smaller units in community spaces, really what, where the trend is, so. Any other questions for the petitioner? Mr. Casada. Just real quick, your rendering here has a white block on the north side, but you're not butting up against the building there, are you? There's a space there, no? We're butting up against the title company on the north property line. Okay. 
Um, I think you're going to have to, how, how tall is the building? Our building uh, the parapet wall will be about 38 feet. Okay, I think you're going to have to move the pole. Possibly. Yeah, the power pole. Yeah. All right. No other questions. Any other questions? So why don't you go ahead and have a seat and we'll open up the public hearing. Is there anyone here that would like to comment on this plan? Yes, sir. You have three minutes. Uh, my name is Aaron Miller. I live in the property at 915 South Center Street, so it's just kitty corner to it. Um, you might remember I actually objected and had some concerns around the first set of plans that they put together is building a parking lot in the property directly next to me. So they've actually taken the time, um, Jim and Shirley took the time to actually walk me and my wife through these plans. Um, that corner lot is in dire need of some updating, and this seems to be a good um, accommodation for those plans. So just wanted to voice my support, and that's it. Thank you. Yep. Anyone else? Okay, not seeing. We'll close the public hearing and bring it back to this side of the table. Further discussion? Questions, Mr. Casada? I just have a question for Mr. Twing. So to, just to make sure I got it straight, if we approve the special land use in that approval, we also have to grant permission to go for the density waiver and for the 31 feet? With the, it, not to 31, not feet. To 31 uh, feet. You would have to do the density waiver and the number of parking spaces. Can I ask a question? In the yes, Ms. Beaky, I'm sorry. Oh, no, that's good. The density waiver, um, can you explain that to me, what, what they're asking, what the actual... Well, the zoning the, ordinance for the first two units that you want to put on the site, ha the site has to have 9,000 square feet mm -hmm. in order to put two residential units on it. Um, they have 5,500 square feet on this site. For each unit after that, you're supposed to have 3,000 square feet of land area or site. So in order to have 12 units on that math, you're at 39,000 square feet. So they're going to be asking for a density waiver to waive the difference between 39,000 and 5,500 in order to put 12 units on this site. Anyone else? How many spots are they short? Parking spots, uh, they need 31 and they have 18. They need 31 based on the residential? I'm sorry, I might have missed something they, there. They need two for each residential unit. Mm -hmm. So that's 24. And then they need uh, seven for the office use, roughly. All right, well, I'd like to make a motion then. Mr. Casada made a motion. I would like to make a motion to approve the special land use and grant permission for the petitioner to seek the density waiver and the parking space number waiver from the zoning board. Is there support? Second. Support by Ms. Douglas. Any discussion on this? I'll just add on the parking. I mean, from my perspective, I think it's a better plan than last time, a little less impactful on the adjoining neighborhood, uh, the way the parking strip was kind of going down before. I think that these are single bedroom apartments. I mean, the, you might get a couple cohabitors in a space like this, which 1.5, so if half of them have two people living in them and the rest have just one individual, then you've achieved that uh, parking requirement at 18. Uh, and I think that's a stretch. Um, but I think, it, you know, the, the nighttime day use, I think there'll be at least a seven you know, uh, parking spot swap opportunity there between um, residential and office use being offset. There may be a couple of occasions where things get mixed up, but, you know, I think that's going to be more rare than it is prevalent. So I support it. Any other discussion? Okay, not seeing. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Special land use has been approved. Now to the site plan, Mr. Twing. Uh, site plan, uh, item one, obviously, is the two variances and, and the need to get those from the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, item two is in reference that the, the overall site plan 
depicts uh, the property at 921 South Center. Um, and we're just simply asking that that be removed from these plan sheets. Um, simply that the uh, th number, number three is related to the mixed use and the type of use is allowed on the ground floor uh, in order to get to the seven space waiver. Um, you're granting permission to exceed the maximum height of uh, 30 feet under item four. Um, item five is that you're indicating that you're happy with the landscape plan as submitted. Item six is in regards to uh, uh, storm detention, uh, the planting of street trees along Hudson as possible, um, the re replacement and reconfiguration of any curbs and gutters and drive approaches on South Main and, and Hudson have to be reconfigured. One other item I would add there is in regards to uh, any encroachments over the into or over the right of way are, are, are not permitted. Uh, and then the standard lighting, signage, and performance bonds are the remainder. Ms. Douglas. Alma approval of the site plan uh, modifying number six to um, include a, a prohibition of encroachments. Mr. Support. Support. Support by Mr. Casada. Any discussion on this motion? Ms. Douglas. I just want to say what a cool building. I mean, I think this looks awesome. Um, it's sensitive to the a lot of the issues that we talk about here at the table, the idea of a front entrance into the apartment building. Um, you know, here we see spaces on a main street that where you want to have retail or something interesting to look at as you walk by, and they have provided that for us. Um, and uh, I just think it's going to be a real asset on Main Street. Like like it a lot. Anyone else? I like it a lot too. I think this is a really interesting use for this corner and I think it'll do nothing but enhance this area. So I think it's a, a really good plan. Let's call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Approved. Good luck. Construction projects are easy. Never any issues. Okay. And they're always on time. <laughs> So let's, um, that closes the public hearings. Now we're going to go on to a site plan. Um, this is SP 18-1232 to construct three single-family attached dwelling units at 921 South Center Street. Mr. Twing. Um, again, this site is uh, zone mixed-use 2. Uh, this one does not require a special land use approval in that it is strictly a residential project and it's not located above any other use uh, the residential development is uh, on grade so it's treated as a permitted use under the zoning ordinance uh, it does have some different requirements uh, and that it ref references back to the multi-family uh, design standards so you'll see some setback items addressed in the site plan memo uh, item one obviously being the Zoning Board of Appeals granting all necessary variances which would include the minimum required lot area or the density uh, uh, for the site um, as well as the minimum side yard and rear setbacks and minimum required maneuvering aisle lanes. Uh, what I'll point out maybe here if I can get to the plan. It's a little different shaped building. Unit three, uh, I guess, orient a little bit. Hudson, the previous project was right on the corner, the public alleys in between. Um, this one is a, a one lot off of Hudson, one on lot north on center. Uh, unit three, um, the south wall of that that unit and the east wall have no setbacks uh, in this dist or in this particular case uh, they're required to have 10 feet uh, and they are placing it right on the uh, uh, property line unit two 
which is depicted in the hash or, or pattern, uh, sets up on the second floor and it complies with all setbacks from the north, east, south, and west. Uh, unit one, uh, or closest to Center Street, uh, is I believe about five feet off the uh, south uh, property line rather than the 10 feet. So those are the side and rear setbacks that uh, uh, need to be addressed. Um, item two under the site plan, as previously the prior site plan, uh, this one shows uh, the site plan for 924 South Main, and we're just keeping them separate, treat, treating them separate. Item three is in regard to the corner vision clearance uh, for the parking space it's and building that comes off the uh, alley. Uh, it doesn't have a, the complete 10-foot uh, triangle. Um, screening along the north and south property lines, they are proposing a six-foot uh, shadow box fence as well as some uh, landscaping, if the Planning Commission is satisfied with that, that contingency uh, simply would be approving the plan as submitted. Uh, the remainder of them are simply our standard contingencies gone right away improvements, uh, exterior lighting and signage. Mr. Twain, any questions for Mr. Twain? Not seeing any petitioners. Still here? Still here. And Jim Schneider, 833 South Center. Um, we think the first building is cool, too. We think this one's really cool. This one, um, when we met with Mr. and Mrs. Cassis. One thing we told them was using the Center Street property for a parking lot was a terrible use for it. It was terrible for the neighbor to the north. The neighbor to the south, that's a rental property, so it probably didn't impact them as much. But just in general, you know, it was not a good use for it. So. We went through the house that's there now with Mr. Cassis, and he said, well, then I'll turn this into a two-family. And we said, uh, no, that's not going to work either. Uh, the, the genesis of this is actually that building that sits on the property line at the back. That is there currently. That is a block garage with a nine-foot ceiling inside. It's in incredible condition. Um, we started looking at that, and that really became sort of the thing that we planned the project around because we said this would be a really cool residential space. So we came up with the idea of putting a second story on that that is perpendicular to it that also creates a private rooftop deck. From that, we designed the front building basically to mimic what was going on at the back and then determined that we could suspend a one-bedroom unit in between the two end up with covered parking for the entire the entire project. Uh, we, we've obviously worked on developing the south side of the property rather than the north, giving the neighbors to the north some breathing room. Um, the parking situation, the maneuvering lane, um, you may note the drive in and the drive out are 12 feet, but the actual maneuvering lane where you park, that is the full 20 feet. That's 20 and 20. Um, you may not know this, but our office is on Center Street. That's the parking configuration that we have that was approved um, about 23 years ago now, I think. But the mm -hmm. psychologist office right next to us, which is also a commercial use, also uses that same configuration. And in actuality, it's got sort of a nice residential scale to it. You don't have a 20-foot driveway, but you've got plenty of maneuvering room at the parking. So again, this this project we think is a great use for this property and and you know a shot in the arm for this area when we purchased our office like I said about 23 years ago we knew the property was zoned commercial we were the first commercial use there at the time Tim I think the zoning was heavy commercial or something like that I remember looking at the zoning ordinance you could have put a gas station on that block so when the master plan started this area of came under quite a bit of uh, study, and we talked about this mixed-use concept and the fact that this neighborhood could actually become a connection between the downtown and what's going on to the south. So I think this really heads in that direction. Um, obviously, it's a mixture. There's a parking lot across the street for the community college that has no setback. There's the four-story parking deck for the college that sits right on the street. So 
I think this is a good compromise, and uh, I think it would be a great you know, very successful project. These, these units are on average about 1,300 square feet, so they're, you know, two-bedroom, very nice, very nice units. So be happy to answer any questions if you have any. Mr. Casano. I'm going to ask the obvious question. The row of houses obviously has a different look than what you've designed, including your own. Why not uh, something that uh, blended? Um, we just didn't think that's what would work. I mean, you know, we didn't think mimicking what's there. I mean, that block is a real mixture. There's the mm -hmm. bank at the end. There's a rental property next to the bank going from north to south. Next to that is a four-unit apartment building with a flat roof. Um, there's a, a home that's currently vacant next to that. The house next to that which is next to our office, is like a rooming house that get, gets rented. So there's nothing significant on that block. And I suspect if someone comes in and purchases some of those other properties, they're going to take them down. They're not going to renovate it and try and make it look, you know, like a, a four-square house or something like that with a pitched roof. So we just felt this was a, was a better direction to go. Um, the... Uh, and again, by, by using more modern architecture, flatter roof, it's, you know, doesn't soar above the neighbors, things like that, so. Okay, so you're, you're anticipating that the adjacent house, at least, I'm assume, assuming not yours, is they're going to come down at some point in the future here. I think, you know, if you're realistic about it, the cost of the property and everything else, I mean, again, when we bought 23 years ago, it was, I don't know, was it a stretch? It was probably a stretch. For, but I mean, I, I just think the value of the property is greater than, you know, what's on there now. I think some of the single family will stay, and I think that's great, but I think you need to mix it up a little bit too. And again, there is no, there's no real context to the neighborhood. You've got surface parking and a parking garage across the street and just a mixture on the, on the east side of the street. So <clears throat> we think this is more in keeping with what, you know, people are looking for. I think you're going to get, you know, I think you're going to get three, you know, solid tenants in this. The Cassises anticipate keeping this and leasing it, so I think you're going to get, you know, good good tenants for a property like this. It's got covered parking and a lot of amenities. Very walkable to downtown, which is a huge plus. So, all right, thanks. Any other questions? Ms. Douglas. Just one. Could this possibly be any cooler? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't, I, anything could be cooler, I guess. But we're, we, we think this is a, a neat project, really. And we think it fits in there very nicely. Mm -hmm. with, you know, without, there's not too much mass to it. We like the way it's broken up and things like that. So Two. thank you. Thank you. So the intent is to rent, these will be rentals, not mm -hmm. condos. Okay. Yep. Okay. Anything else? Any other questions? Um, you, Aaron may want to say, I don't know if it's not a public hearing, but Aaron's the one that's going to live next door to it. So if you want to hear from him, he's here. So We already we heard. heard. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is there a motion? Ms. Douglas. A motion to approve the site plan with the listed contingencies. Is there support? Support. Support by Mr. Casada. Is there discussion? I see any. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Approved. Well done. Thank you very much. Nice looking build. Thank you. Happy holidays, you guys. And to you. Thank you. All right. Let's see. Good luck. Thanks for coming in. <clears throat> Okay, next we have a site plan to expand a metal fabrication plant, SP181233, Fluxing Gate at 4336 Coolidge Highway. Mr. Twain. Uh, this site's on the northeast corner of uh, Coolidge and uh, Normandy Highway. Uh, the petitioner is proposing to add approximately uh, 65,900 square feet of building area after they've demoed about 17,000. Uh, so the net increase is a slightly over 48,000 square feet. 
Uh, they are, are going to maintain their parking uh, requirement and meet the standards for uh, 348 spaces. Um, I'll let the petitioner tell you what, what their plans are for the space. Uh, based on the site plan, um, the outdoor storage area is, is not, not changing other than the fence line is moving um, and, and they are adding some uh, landscaping based on the approved plan uh, and quantities to the parking lot, some uh, additional landscaping, uh, as well as extending the berm along uh, Coolidge Highway and some additional landscaping in front of the building. Um, in that regard, this is a permitted use, uh, so you'll just see the site plan memo. Um, item one was that landscaping within the interior uh, parking lot shall be provided in accordance if you're happy with what they presented. Um, uh, the plan will simply be approved as is. Uh, the, as I indicated, there are no changes being made to the placement and operation of the outdoor storage area, uh, so that issue is not really relevant other than noting uh, continued compliance with the approved, previously approved plans. Item three, we are simply looking for a cross-section of the fences that are being proposed uh, uh, that's being moved. The remainder are really uh, standard contingencies regarding uh, uh, compliance with right-of-way plans and standards, lighting and signage. Thank you, Mr. Twain. Any questions? Is the petitioner here? Is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, I, Andrew Cottrell with Gafari, 17101 Michigan Avenue. Um, if you'd like, I can walk you through kind of the project. Um, The color site plan that was not in your, your package. Um, but what it is, is we are adding a, a few different things to the building to an, enhance the, the manufacturing process on the inside of the facility. Uh, currently, like Mr. Twing said, we're demoing a portion of the back side of the building off and which is kind of underutilized, rebuilding a section of addition to the back half, which is faces east. Um, that also is causing us to in kind of enhance this back fire lane. Currently, there's a depressed area where there used to be an old rail line spur, which just fills up with water currently. So that is going to be actually filled in and become the new fire loop that actually goes around the building. On the front side of the building, we're going to add a new addition, which is going to help to kind of screen the overhead doors that, that were currently there facing Coolidge Avenue. It's also going to help to kind of screen the loading docks here. It's going to become a new employee entrance, uh, employee locker room, and employee um, lunchroom and break room area. There's a, a current small little piece of building here that we're going to demo, and that's going to be the visitor parking area where it kind of currently is, but shifted over more to the the, the main entrance for visitors. Um, also along Coolidge Avenue, to tie in with the new addition, we're going to actually be renovating the facade of the existing portion of the building. Currently, there's a lot of existing glass um, from the old manufacturing plant that's just been painted over. So we're actually going to be removing part of that facade and reskinning it. Um, and that is included in those renderings that were in that package. Um, from a landscaping standpoint, um, this was currently the employee parking. We're going to be reconfiguring it um, because we're displacing the parking where the addition's going. So the fence that was is moving over towards the north, that's actually going to take some of that outdoor storage which is going to go inside of the building now. So the amount of outdoor storage that was currently there is going to actually be reduced. Um, we're going to be adding landscaping inside the parking lot, which currently does not exist out there with islands and the trees um, to align with the city ordinance. And also this green belt, the width of that that currently out there about 20 feet today is going to remain and it's actually going to get extended down a little farther. So that does. Thank you. Any questions for the petitioner? Mayor. It was one of the first questions I have. If you ever go to raise ice cream, bring your kids there, they always ask, you know, what is all that 
stuff out there, mm. and I see your containerization issue. You're doing a lot of outdoor storage. Are you saying most of it, if not all of it, is going to be moved out of visibility for... Um, it's just going to be reduced. So right now, the, the current fence line is kind of right in here, and so that's all filled up with the, the storage rack. So we're eliminating about 40 feet of that, and now also we're adding this parking area in front of those racks. So right now those racks extend all the way out. So we'll have a little more buffer in terms of the trees that we're planting there to s help screen that storage that is remaining out there. You said it was the, sto the racks are moving indoors? It's, it's some of that storage that we're displacing with the parking is actually going to be housed inside. And that's it's due to kind of the expansions and the reworking of the internal processes. Okay. So we'll see less of it. Yes. And it will be screened from the vegetation and set back from the parking that's going to be moved to the front there. Correct. Ms. Douglas. Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't look at the closely at the landscaping plan here. What are you proposing for landscaping um, where you've got it drawn in there? So along the front, there will be new trees. Currently, there's like ponderosa pines along there, and they, you can see through them. Um, so we're proposing a lot new landscaping along there. Plus, with our new facade along there, it's going to really enhance that kind of view along Coolidge Avenue. Uh, the landscaping on this corner of the property is going to remain as is. Um, infill it with what we need to to meet the, the zoning ordinance um, and then along with all the deciduous trees in the parking lot areas. So it seems like, no it doesn't seem like, Google Street View set shows um, that you have berms there. The with berms the will remain. So, but what I kind of see here is, you know, pine trees with roots that are, you know, uh, exposed um, because of the Berming, and I'm going to turn to our horticulturists here um, and say, you know, if you're going to be cleaning but doing landscaping elsewhere, I'd like to see you clean that up. And if we have to, I mean, berms and trees are, I have learned, are not an ideal combination. And I guess I, if you're going to put berms there, I would rather see you know, shrubs or something that's going to get enough water and hold enough soil for that not to happen. Um, or if the ordinance requires berming, doesn't, uh, uh, unless the, the ordinance can let us go without berming, then I would support trees in that, but not trees and berm. Well, the intent of the original approval with berms and, and trees is to provide a sufficient height to screen the area. It's not intended to be a landscaped area in the sense of perfect landscaping or other thing else. It's it's intended to get you sufficient height to screen um, the elements around it. So I'm not sure you're going to realize that if you take trees down and put shrubs in. Well, but you're not getting that now because the trees are, I mean, all you see are tree trunks, um, and you can easily see past them to what's there. Can they reduce the berm, the height of the berm? Mr. Twing, if they you're put gonna, in... You're going to do whatever you would like as part of the site plan approval. I just was... That's why it was required okay. previously. So I... I, I I'm going to turn to Ms. Barra. Sure, yeah, I would agree with Ms. Douglas. Um, water doesn't flow uphill. So uh, it's better for uh, your site development to have less berm and, and, and allow the roots to get into the ground rather than growing out, outside of the ground. So I would strongly consider reducing that berm and planting the right plants that can survive that area. Um, evergreens are fine, you know, uh, not Colorado spruce. Right. Um, and I, I think the, uh, the city's got a good list of uh, acceptable plants, but if there's an opportunity to reduce that berm, I, I would certainly do that. Less maintenance for you and less watering for you, too. I guess for me with that screen there the only thing that I have concern about is um, you know it looks like those uh, racks are stacked pretty high which I don't know what the maximum height is to stack those but I think taking down the mature trees could impact the screening there I realize it's a commercial area but um, aesthetically 
you know, it would look nicer to make sure that whatever's done, that it's not just some day lilies planted yeah, there. Yeah, right. You Those know, you want something to make sure shade. that the, the landscaping plan accommodates <clears throat> the concealing of the, the racks, which, you know, apparently there's a permission to store them outside, so... Any other questions for the petitioner? Okay, then is there a motion? A, a question first. Uh, Mr. Twing, can we make a motion that says um, fix this landscaping at the discretion of the city planners or how much more specific would you like us to be? Um. Well, I, the only thing I hear you having trouble with is the berm along Normandy and the southern portion. Oh, Coolidge. Along is, Coolidge. Yeah. Um, and we can work with them about what needs to either re, be replanted or the berm flattened out. I don't think your intent is to get rid of the berm because I think then you're not going to have the height you need to, to screen or comply with the screening requirement. But perhaps it can get flattened out it, or not have as much a slope in certain, certain areas to hold water better and keep the trees alive. But so can we'll we work with the petitioner on how to safely leave that. that to your discretion and professional I, I judgment? I think we can address it with them. Okay. Then I'm going to move approval of the site plan with the contingencies add list, as listed, adding contingency number eight, that the petitioner... Um, uh, and develop a, a landscaping plan to the satisfaction of the uh, planning staff. Is there support? Support it. Support by mayor. Any discussion? I just think that, you know, in that discretion, we don't, <laughs> you know, require the petitioner to spend $8.9 million building. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 something that, that, that's reasonable, uh, I'm, I'm good with. Any other discussion? Not seeing all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Approved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, last item tonight is uh, other, on, under other business, and this is a sign variance, 181216. Request to install a wall sign for restaurant Diamond's Steak and Seafood at 100 South Main Street with the following variances. Wave 36 inches from maximum permitted 12-inch protection of wall sign from build building facade and B, allow a wall sign to extend beyond the vertical ends of east and north wall surfaces. Uh, well, very, very briefly, um they're, they're proposing a sign that uh, projects beyond the uh, maximum limit is allowed under the sign ordinance, which is 12 inches. Uh, the petitioner is proposing that that uh, sign project out 48 inches, uh, so they're requesting a variance of some 36 inches for the projecting sign. It also extends beyond the wall edge of the building and the sign ordinance prohibits uh, signs from wrapping around or projecting beyond. Uh, so those are the two variances in front of in front of you. The proposed sign is on the northeast corner of the former Cantina Diablo location. Uh, and I don't know if there's a good view. Uh, Probably this sketch is the best in the sense of 11 miles on the right-hand side, south mains on the bottom. The sign is on the diagonal, and as you can see, it extends beyond the lines of the, or the walls of the building, and it also projects out. Case. So, Mr. Twain, the, the current wraparound of this silvery good Tex-Mex thing, is that to remain? And they're wanting to put the sign no. on? No, that's, no, that's all open. gone. Cantina okay. Diablo's okay. closed. All those signs are removed and gone. Okay. Uh, there is no um, non-conforming status or continuation of variances under the sign ordinance in okay. the sense of 
But from what I remember, then the wraparound. Down. I mean, we did this with Cantina Diablos when because Memphis Smoke had a wraparound sign. And Cantina Diablos did, others. and then I mean, aside from the the uh, distance, the wraparound is for this site has been there. It's previously. been there in previous. Okay. Yeah. So now we're just looking a little further onto the cantilever more out, a little further onto the sidewalk. Yep. Okay. And uh, the Ms. Douglas, the I'm projecting sorry. sign on the east side is because they've got an awning canopy that has um, the name on it, right? And if they didn't have their name on it, it wouldn't be a sign and you could have a canopy there. If it didn't have any wording on it, it'd be a canopy. Hmm. <laughs> and canopies are good because they shelter people as they're entering a, an establishment. I'm not sure there's a top on this. Oh. Oh, there's no top. Oh, maybe it should be a canopy. <laughs> Is the petitioner here? Do you have anything to add, sir? Just one comment. First of all, so you can see it in a slightly better I'll announce myself. <clears throat> Sure. And speaking of these 48-inch projections, it really does appear. Uh, Roman Bonislavski, Ron and Roman Architects just finished the restaurant. It's nice we did the original uh, restaurant that was there prior, and it's good to revisit it after what was there before. But um, it, it really does resemble a canopy on the corner. Um, structurally, it was very, very difficult for us to put a top on it. So we actually took the proactive move of saying we love the visual of a canopy on a corner entry building. And the projection of the sign is really it just pinned. It's a cut wooden sign that's just pinned on the canvas face. So it really is integral to what appears to be a canopy. And it's semantics because it doesn't have a cap, so it doesn't. Uh, qualify as a canopy, so literally. It's kind of a banner with a with words. It, it, it's a canopy with no top on it, and actually, it responds very well with the actual awnings, which were just put up recently, that were approved, that continue along the building phase. Hmm. Leave it back here. Hey, can I ask? So, why doesn't it have a top on it? Sorry, I mean, um, I, I may have misunderstood. Uh -huh. <coughs> As a fabric canopy with a light metal frame, the engineering was almost impossible. The, the thing wants to drop off the building if you get a heavy snow load on it. And we did not want to do anything hard. But the fabric of it is still, the door is recessed, so there is some cover. Well, I'm very right familiar with the corner because yes. I walk past it and stand on that corner waiting for the light a lot. It's still tucked in underneath that little bit of protection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for the petitioner? Mr. Casada. Okay, why the 48 inches? What is it? And, and you've lit it. So, so tell tell me why it, why it's uh, four, 48 inches, is four feet sticking out. You've also got some light. Explain right. explain to me why why you did that. Well, and why you have reasons. to do it. There's actually a design reason that that uh, actually drives the entire philosophy. It's named diamonds, and we gave it a, a chamfered diamond shape in the appearance of a canopy at the corner of the building. So. Uh, and it works with the projections of the awnings that continue along Main Street, so it continues that line of projection of fabric that comes off of the building face. No one would know it's not a canopy. Uh, that's the point. It's purposefully treated, and we've, we've uh, often used the fascia material as a canopy structure because uh, the softness of fabric on a building is what makes it friendly and casual and not doing a hard built overlit construction. It's very, very, very subtle signage. The signage letters are only this big on that entire building. I, I actually think this is a very appropriate thing to have the corner sign on here. Um, I think that um, it works, and I think it's subtle enough. I'm, I'm a little bit concerned about it uh, sticking out, especially it's a wood construction, and you know, even if it doesn't have a top on it over time, um, is, it, is it structurally going to be uh, safe to be sticking out yeah, into the right uh, way? Uh, Royal Oak Awnings did the full engineering. It's not a wooden construction. The sign itself is just a cut-out wooden sign that sits oh, I thought and you said is it was pinned a wood off. Frame. No, uh, the sign itself is, but it's a metal frame, uh, traditional canopy construction, metal frame with, with umbrella fabric on it. 
Ms. Beaky. That, that, that corner is very tight. Like if you're on the sidewalk, it's very tight. So how high overhead is that and how far does it project? And I just wonder, just like if a bus cut, or one of the buses don't turn there, but a truck or something, oh, would they, no, it's, no. it's far enough back. Oh, it, it doesn't, it, it, the sidewalks at that point are seven or eight feet out to the curb line. It doesn't even come close to the, to the corner. And how high overhead is it, the lowest we part? We have eight feet of clearance, I believe, on the underside of it, which is a city standard on traditional awnings and it matches the awnings that are installed which were just installed last four I, I missed them because I, I these were just know. installed uh, the week and a half ago I think so that's Main Street I block both of them. I block. yes Mr. Twing uh, am I correct that um, this establishment would ordinarily be allowed to have one 100 square foot sign on the north facade and one 100 square foot sign or 10 percent of the frontage on the east facade? Um, up to 10 percent. Up to 10 percent. 10 percent or that maximum. So, I mean, the fact is that they have no signage on either of those facades um, and a, a very modest, I mean, well under the requirement, you know, sign on the corner here. Um, and I will just say that I'm, I'm inclined to balance those things out and make the concession on the corner wrap given, you know, the fact that we've actually reduced signage on this building. There are small secondary window monikers that are going in along all the glass on both sides, but again, we're talking inches on each window. It's an ornament, a jewelry ornament, and not, you know, sales or the hours or anything like that. And that was part of the package that was submitted. Ms. Douglas. To. Well, in fact, I remember we did the same sort of thing for the Hamlin Pub. Yeah. Um, they could have had a lot of signage on that building, and they reduced it ex greatly. Right. Um, and as a concession, we let them have a projecting sign. So it's, this, this is, would be consistent with other actions we've taken. Is there a motion? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll move to grant the sign variance. Second. Okay, second by Ms. Douglas. Is there any discussion? Just that I think it looks, I think it looks good. Mm -hmm. I've been to the restaurant. But the restaurant yeah. looks nice now. Yeah. yeah. The downstairs and the upstairs from the outside. Mayor? Yeah, I, I'll just say I think it looks very nice, but Fitting into my judgment, it doesn't. I think what fits in is exactly what Commissioner Douglas said, is that balance between what you could do and what you are doing and, you know, meeting the spirit of what we want of not having an oversigned, Thank you. you know, downtown. So very artistically, aesthetically done, and I think a very fair compromise. I, I like this, too. I'm just thrilled that it's not red anymore. <laughs> Probably would have voted for it if you just said we'll paint it a different, any, any color. Um, I think it's a, a, a good compromise. I, I, I like the sign. It's subtle. Uh, it's rich looking and um, I'll, I'll be voting to approve also. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Approved. Try the ravioli. Mm -hmm. I like the carpaccio. Uh, what's Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. All right, is there anything else other than the adjournment? Move to adjourn. Is there a second? Second that. All those in favor say aye. 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 aye.